So jury selection now underway in what could be the landmark federal trial over the nation's opioid crisis. To be decided, should drug distributors be held responsible for the epidemic? Bob Bianchi, criminal defense attorney, here to explain this. And good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, Complicated, complex, nuanced. Go ahead and tell yeah, us what's at stake. Here. Not since the tobacco litigation in the 80s, where there was a $245 billion settlement in 1980s money. What they did here is there's thousands of lawsuits being filed by state attorney generals, counties, all across the country. So what they did in Ohio, which is really interesting, they gave a consolidated amount of cases to this judge. They tried to settle them, but essentially what they're saying is, okay, if we got to go to trial now we have a benchmark it's kind of a bellwether as to what a jury is going to come back because the interesting statistics and I pulled this out from the Kaiser Family Foundation is currently 69 percent of the public believes you should blame doctors 68 percent says you should blame the people that got addicted and 60 percent uh, blame the drug company so you're going to see a lot of finger pointing there because in any civil case you have to assign blame all across the spectrum pharmacies will be included in this as well. The drug companies are saying this is their defense. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it. Yikes, how are we supposed to be responsible for the manner with which these things are prescribed? But the statistics belie that. They have gone from uh, anywhere from 76 billion, billion opiates that have been sold from 2006 to 2012. And as the epidemic was rising, more companies got involved and pumped more into the system knowing people were being highly addicted Do to this. Do you have any predictions on the outcome? I think that uh, the outcome is going to be there's going to be some shared responsibility, but it's not just the drug manufacturers, it's the distributors that I think are going to take the biggest brunt here because they actually have an affirmative duty to alert the DEA if they see any unusual or suspicious activity with regard to the oversell of these drugs, and they did relatively nothing. Why do you think it hinges on expert testimony? Yeah, uh, well, the experts are going to be, the, for example, the plaintiffs have hired a former DEA expert who is going to go through all the protocols of what should be looked for, all of the pumping, massive pumping of these billions of pills in some locations. Millions were being sold from individual pharmacies and it's going to say the distributors should have known based on the rules and guidelines that something was nefarious here and made a contact. But instead of contacting the DEA and saying something suspicious here, they just ratcheted up more and more sales, profits over people. Settlement's going to be difficult. They tried to settle, and, and this is what the judge, this judge is very strong. They're like, no more settlements. Trial jury selection's going now. I understand this is a trial lawyer. Maybe when they see the whites of the eyes of the jury, we always say, people will come to the negotiating table and try to resolve this. But I, if this uh, jury comes back and they hold these distributors and manufacturers responsible, you may see a lot of drug companies go bankrupt. It's going to be a fascinating case to watch. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank Bob you, Robert. Yankee. My pleasure. Thank sir. you.